like to call this meeting to order. It is the regular meeting of the City of City Council of the City of Cottonwood held on March 15th at 6 p.m. at the Council Chambers building. Deputy Clerk, please take the roll. Councilmember Pratt? Here. Councilmember Dowling? Here. Councilmember Linsky? Here. Councilmember Garrison? Present. Councilmember Harvey? Here. Vice Mayor Parker? Here. Mayor Jones? Here. Okay, next is the Pledge of Allegiance, and we have a Cottonwood Youth Advisory Commission member, Maya D D Dower. How did I do? <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You're fine. <laughs> Gabrielle, because you've been here a couple of times, so didn't think you looked like Maya, but. <laughs> um, so May, uh, Gabrielle is from the Cottonwood Youth Advisory Commission, and she's been on it for four years, four years now. And she's Commander Makucha's daughter, and um, a senior this year. Yes. Do you want to share a little bit about Cottonwood Youth Advisory Commission before we do the pledge? Right now, we're working on our second team night, and we're trying to involve more activities so that we can bring in more of the youth. And oh. that'll be in the beginning of April. All right. Well, congratulations on that activity. May I ask a question? Yes, about please. That? At the, at the last Youth Commission meeting, you were talking about maybe getting some sponsorships from local businesses to help support the, uh, the teen night. Is that still on the table, do you know? Um, it is still on the table. We haven't gotten everything together yet as a meeting, but I know okay. people are working on it. Okay, because the cameras are rolling, so it might be a good opportunity to yeah. ask and if there's any. And so, on behalf of Councilmember Elinsky, will you please invite the public to do that? speak to the camera? Certainly, yeah. So <laughs> if there's any local businesses out there would like to sponsor the uh, Youth Commission for their teen night, which, when does that teen night take place? April 8th. April 8th. They're looking for sponsorships to help defray some of the costs. So even a $50 uh, donation from a business would, would help out tremendously. All right, great. Okay, if you'd all stand for the pledge. Okay, the next item is a brief summary of current events by the mayor, city council, and or city manager. The public body does not propose, discuss, deliberate, or take legal action on any matter brought up during the summary unless the specific matter is properly noticed for legal action. Mr. Rodriguez. Mayor Council, I've got a, a fairly short list here. Um, at a recent uh, um, library uh, author reading for J.A. Janice, we had 94 people in attendance, wow. which was really, really good. Uh, also, we had um, 24 people also at the library to meet our canine, our officer, uh, meet an officer and our canine cop, which was really uh, a thrill for a lot of the kids. And also, and finally, the police department is doing a media push on panhandling. You may have seen some of the articles already in the paper. And uh, they're looking for a partner uh, to partner with the business community using the Safe Shopper program, which is get, currently getting rolled out. Uh, and uh, you may also remember the Safe Shopper program was in our management report last week. And that's all, Mayor. Thank you. And just to make an announcement tonight, um, Ordinance number 621, amending the zoning map of the city of Cottonwood for, um, for a parcel of land totaling 1.96 acres located at 950 South Camino Real will be pulled from the agenda. We will not be discussing that tonight. Okay, the next, oh, excuse me. Yes, Terrence. I would like to remind everyone that there's a big event coming up in Cottonwood on August 16th, I believe, is the Brian Mickelson Memorial Run, and it's not too late to sign up. In fact, you save money if you do sign up early. And the run has just received some kind of recognition, and Richard Faust may remember what that recognition is. No, I don't. 
it was mentioned in a national publication as one of the the, the best runs in the country. Wow, and awesome. So it's grown every year, and I've worked it every year, and it's just exciting to see the growth and people come from all over the country, really, to run it. Mm -hmm. So remember, April 16th, and yeah. we have a full marathon, half marathon, 5K, and a two-mile walk run. 10K. 10K. Yes. And a two-mile walk okay. run that a lot of families participate in. That one uh, was uh, Runner's Goal, the Runner's Choice Award. That's right. Okay, good. Thanks, Ray. All right. And um, I think I read that it's March 31st. There's a, one of the cutoffs for having a less rate to yes, pay. Yes, for get the reduced rate. Yes. reading somewhere. Okay, so on my report, oh, yes, Vice Mayor. I just got a quick one. Last week, the chamber had a travel writer in, and Lana took him around Cottonwood and some of the vineyards. And um, Christian and I had to make a difficult choice. We either stayed in the office in the afternoon or we took a canoe ride down the river. So we got all wet. We went down the river. And if anybody ever gets a chance to do that, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. We got in trouble for splashing the travel rider. But um, it and was. And did you make noise? You're not supposed to make not, noise. We made some, not a lot. But not at the no noise sign, right? No, no, we did OK. <laughs> OK. But it was really a lot of fun. And if anybody gets a chance to do that, I would do it. All right. I'm going again someday. All right, lots of, of good times. Anybody else, council members, before I start? Okay, um, I met with uh, Pastor Hall about Sunshine Acres one day this past week. And he was the pastor here at the Evangel Worship Center and um, he and his wife, Deb, went down to take care of kids at Sunshine Acres and they shared information about it. And um, I did let Steps to Recovery Homes know about it because if a parent has to go into drug treatment, um, that would be an opportunity for someone to take care of their child or children um, while they were getting better. And I also met with Susan Culp, and she was doing a survey on the Verde River Basin Partnership and shared um, my thoughts with her on that. On March 4th, I attended um, an event called Addressing Opioid Dependency and Pregnancy. It was held at the hospital, and it was sponsored by Matt Force. Um, I, we did have a joint meeting with the planning and zoning to discuss the 89 and Vine development, and that was covered in our local news media. I attended the Teen Maze, and I used to attend that when Linda Evans and Barbara Ch Chavez, remember when they used to do Teen Maze? And I hadn't been to one for a long time, but I did attend this, and it was pretty much the same. It was a lot of neat stuff that they teach the young people. I attended the NABO meeting and heard Kimber Lanning talk about um, the Local First program. And of course, Cottonwood is very involved with Local First and has been for quite some time. But I believe that it's kind of a new thought or a new, new thing for Sedona. They, so maybe she's going to be helping Sedona folks in the future with that. Um, on March 11th, I went to the Governor's Council on May Aging meeting, and in May I'll be attending a two-day conference on elderly and aging. March 12th, I spoke to the Marine Corps League conference at the Legion in Cottonwood. And I met with Bernadette Selna this week, and we talked about her farming operation, and our staff has been working very hard to get them to where they can put some crops in the ground, so we appreciate our staff. On March 19, the Walk a Mile for Meals at the Senior Center will be held, and I hope some members of the council can participate in that. Um, then on the 19th will also be the Engine and Tractor Show, and on March 19th, we're all gonna be busy people. The Steps to Recovery Prime Rib Fundraiser is going to be held, and if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, it's a great event, and hopefully you will all attend and support this effort. And on March 28th, I said I would provide lasagna for the Young Life group. So um, that's my report for this week, except coming to the Cottonwood Library. The Verde Valley Comic Expo is coming, and this is where comics and pop culture meet. So do you love comics, stories, art? This event is for you. There's a special ra raffle just for cosplayers. And you'll have to come to find out what a cosplayer is, because I'm not telling. Or you have to watch the TV show about it. <laughs> and then there's a special raffle. And wear your favorite costumes. It's $5 or 
or it's only three dollars if you bring two cans of two canned food items and kids under 10 are free it's going to be held by the library at the Cottonwood Rec Center on April 9th from 10 to 5 and proceeds will help fund the summer the library's summer reading program anything else that you've thought of in the meantime okay awards we have presentation of the distinguished budget presentation award for the city's current budget to the finance department from the government finance officers association so mr rodriguez are you going to tell us or share a little bit of information or do you want me to do it or um, I, I i relate all the information to you mayor it's in that packet right there okay so the government the government finance officers association of the united states states and canada and they call that gfoa is pleased to announce that the city of cottonwood arizona has received the gfoa's distinguished budget presentation award for its budget the award represents a significant achievement by the entity and how many years has have we received this? Fifteen or twenty-four? Uh, this one, this one would have been fifteen. Fifteen. The other one is twenty-four. Okay, so we've received this award for outstanding achievement in financial reporting, and this is meeting the highest principles of government budgeting. In order to receive this budget award, we had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for effective budget presentation. These guidelines are designed to assess how well our budget serves as, one, a policy document, two, a financial plan, three, an operations guide, and four, a communications device. Budget documents must be rated proficient in all four categories. And the 14 mandatory criteria within those categories to receive this award. When a distinguished budget presentation award is granted to a city, a certificate of recognition for budget presentation is also presented to the individual or department designated as being primarily responsible for its having achieved the award. And this award has be, been presented to the Cottonwood Finance Department. For budgets beginning in 2014, uh, 1,491 participants received this award. And this is nationwide in Canada, as it said. Award recipients have pioneered efforts to improve the quality of budgeting and provide an excellent example for other governments throughout North America. So the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada presented a Distinguished Budget Presentation Award to the City of Cottonwood, Arizona for its annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2015. And this award is for one year only, but we, we work hard and we get them year after year. So, um, Council, if you would please come up and present to Rudy, Kirsten, and Helen these awards that they have received. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay, the next items. We have two proclamations. The first one is proclaiming March 30th, 2016 as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. And we have Ed Zumiskus, and I always say that one wrong too, so you're gonna be able to correct, if you wanna come up while I read it. And um, he's here to accept this proclamation. Welcome home, Vietnam Veterans Day, March 30th, 2016. Whereas the Vietnam War was fought in the Republic of South Vietnam from 1961 to 1975, and involved North Vietnamese regular forces and Viet Cong guerrilla forces in armed conflict with United States Armed Forces and the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. And whereas by the end of 1965, there were 80,000 United States troops in Vietnam, and by 1969, a peak of approximately 543,000 troops was reached. And whereas, it was time for all of us in the spirit of pride and gratitude re to recall the hectic, the, hero the heroic accomplishments of the 58,195 servicemen and women whose names are listed on the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And whereas, we also wish to recognize the 623 men and women from the great state of Arizona who gave the ultimate sacrifice and thank them for their unselfish devotion to duty. And whereas on March 30th, 1973, the United States Armed Forces completed the withdrawal of combat units and combat support units from South Vietnam. And whereas since 2012, the cities and towns of the Verde Valley have worked cooperatively with numerous organizations to partner on an annual Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans event. And whereas the 2016 Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans event will take place from Wednesday, March 30th to Sunday, April 3rd, 2016. Now therefore I, Diane Jones, Mayor of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona, do hereby proclaim March 30th, 2016 as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day in Cottonwood, Arizona, and call upon all citizens to honor and recognize the contributions of veterans who served in the United States Armed Forces in Vietnam during war and during peace, and to encourage the people of Cottonwood to observe Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day with appropriate ceremonies and activities that A, provide the appreciation Vietnam War veterans deserve, but did not receive upon returning home from the war, and B, demonstrate the resolve that never again shall the nation disregard and denigrate a generation of veterans. Would you like to share a little bit more information about the upcoming event in Sedona? Yes, I would, Mayor, and thank you very much. First, I wanted to say thank you to the city of Cottonwood for the very generous support you've given us in putting this event together. Um, there, are, there are three three things that are happening on March 31st. It's the opening of the wall. It'll be in Posse Grounds Park, and that will happen at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And from that point on, the traveling replica of the Vietnam Memorial will be open around the clock for visitors. Um, so we encourage people, especially people who have never been to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., to come see it because it's very much like being there. It's very touching. Yes, and especially if you have relatives, grandparents, aunts, uncles, parents, brothers or sisters whose names are on the wall, I certainly encourage you to be there. Second, we now are doing a 50th anniversary recognition or commemoration luncheon of the Vietnam War, war on April 1st from 11 until 2.30 in the afternoon at the um, Sedona Elks Lodge. This is a special um, luncheon. There's no charge for it. It's being sponsored by the Arizona Department of Veterans Services and the Vietnam Veterans of America. Um, so anyone who is what we call Vietnam era, which according to the Department of Defense is from 1 November 1955 to 15 May 1975, 
who is a veteran, um, is invited to attend. Unfortunately, we're trying to honor about 200 veterans, so we can't invite spouses and guests with it. I'd love to have the mayor there, but um, it's, it gets very, very tight. That's all, all we can get into the Elks Lodge. And finally, on Saturday, we have Welcome Home <coughs> Vietnam Veterans Day celebration, which starts at 11 o'clock uh, at Posse Grounds Park. Uh, you'll know it's beginning when you hear the motorcycles go through. Um, they'll start in Camp Verde, they'll come to, through Cottonwood up to Sedona, um, and then the picnic will start up at Posse Grounds Park. And we have asked Mayor Jones to speak during that, and so we are looking forward to having her be there. That is what's going on. All right. Well, thank you. And please, your last names. <laughs> it's Uzumetskis. Uzumetskis. Okay. And Dr. Uzumetskis. So I just wanted to mention that um, we do have one eligible council member who's eligible to attend that event, and that is Council Member Haudegui, who is a Vietnam veteran. And not only that, but he has a brother whose name is on that wall. And David, is it? Yes. David Haudegui lost his life fighting the Vietnam War, so this family was highly impacted by that. Yes. And we have the vice mayor I would like to bring up that her husband Roger was in two branches of the service and a Vietnam veteran. And her son Tommy has been in the special forces for 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. So, and then council member. Um, Pratt's had two brothers who served in the service and uh, had all of the issues that go along with some of the difficult things that happen to veterans when they return. And my husband, Paul, was a Vietnam veteran serving in 1969. So, um, at Council, if you would all come up, please, and present this proclamation. Uh, I'd like to thank the Council who did donate to this project. Okay, the next item is proclaiming April 2 through 9th, um, 2016 as SciTech STEM Week. Whereas the Arizona SciTech Festival is an eight-week celebration of science and technology in Arizona, sponsored by the Arizona Board of Regents, Arizona Commerce Authority, Arizona Science Center, Arizona State University, Arizona Technology Council Foundation and the University of Arizona. And whereas festival events occur in venues throughout the state and celebrate the importance of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, education, and its role in our state's economic growth. And whereas the city of Cottonwood initiated, provided leadership, and collaborated on the first Verde Valley SciTech Festival, March 22nd through 29th, 2016, 
2014, which was held at multiple locations in Cottonwood and the Verde Valley. Whereas the Verde Valley SciTech Festival partners' joint goal is to showcase the amazing STEM accomplishments throughout our communities and inspire our next generation of STEM enthusiasts and leaders. And whereas a framework has been created and partners throughout the Verde Valley will bring content, venues, events, and promotions to promote STEM, and whereas Verde Valley SciTech Festival is a success story about the rural Arizona relationships, partnerships, collaboration, and enthusiasm, and includes all sectors of the community. And whereas the city of Cottonwood will partner with local municipalities, educational organizations, nonprofits, and businesses, April 6th through 9th, 2016, for the third annual Verde Valley SciTech Festival. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Diane Jones, Mayor of the City of Cottonwood, do hereby proclaim April 2nd through 9th, 2016, as SciTech STEM Week, and witness whereof I have set my hand to be affixed this 15th day of March, 2016. And if you are involved in any way with the SciTech Festival, will you come up, please, with, um, with our finance director, general services general manager, Rudy Rodriguez, is a major player in the efforts of SciTech. And Morgan has also participated. If anybody else has, please come up to accept this. So, I present this to you too. Thank you for all you do. You're very faithful of attending meetings, and without Rudy, we would be So, when the SciTech Festival started three years ago, uh, Rudy or Doug was on vacation. Our city manager was on vacation, and so Rudy went to the first meeting. And I guess it's just having to play with numbers all day. And he has a very creative side, and so all of a sudden he was taking a major role in the SciTech Festival. What is really amazing and wonderful about the SciTech Festival is the relationships, the regional partnerships that we have created with um, schools, businesses, nonprofits, municipalities are all working together with one goal. And the issue is, is that if we don't, uh, supporting STEM or STEAM, if you add the arts, is really not just a school's responsibility. And we have our professor from Yavapai College over here who, who knows how this all works. And it really is up to the community. It's up to all of us to support our children, our youth, and encourage them to understand science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, and to seek that type of education to ensure that future jobs that become available, and even flying airplanes, whatever it is that you do, winemaking, everything that you do, working in a restaurant, it all takes math. So. It is something that we want to work as a community together to encourage our kids and our youth to be interested in such things so that jobs, as I said, that become available, that they'll have the skills to fill those jobs. So, okay, the next item is call to the public and this portion of the agenda is set aside for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda for discussion. The council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda for discussion and or action. Comments are limited to a five minute time period. And tonight we have a request to speak by Larry Minch um, considering the lease content. If you would please come up Mr. Minch. Madam Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, <clears throat> This is a great book that got put together. And in it are all the leases from the airport. And it turns out <clears throat> three of them have one thing written and three of them have another. And the differences are significant. And I would request that council ask the appropriate person to meet with me and 
put the sentence that's significant in the three, put that sentence in mind, and obviously the other two, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so staff, would you please accommodate that request? Yes. Yes, Mayor, we'll take care. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is comments regarding items listed on the agenda are limited to a five-minute time period per speaker. The consent agenda. The following items are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen so request, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Item number one is renewal of contract with Heinfeld, Meech & Company, PC, for professional auditing services. Item number two is extension of agreement with Fireworks Productions of Arizona for Fireworks Production Services for the City's 4th of July celebration. Item number three is special event liquor license application submitted by Robert Solan Solani, Applicant for the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance for an event scheduled for April 9, 2016 at the Old Town Center for the Arts located at 633 North 5th Street. Item number four is special event liquor license submitted by Beth Kennedy, applicant for the Verde Valley Fair Association for an event scheduled for April 16, 2016 at the Verde Valley Fairgrounds located at 1100 East Cherry Street. Are there any items that a member of the council would like to pull for discussion? Are there any items that a member of the public would like to pull for a discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Pratt, please. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. The vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. New business. Item number one has been polled. Item number two is resolution number 2831, acceptance of right of way for the proposed continuation of Grosetta Ranch Road to Main Street. Mr. Scott. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. We may be having an issue with the projector, so unfortunately, we don't have the images, the overhead images. Thank you, Matt. You don't mind taking a look at that. I'll try my best to describe what, what we're working on. Uh, as many of you know, the city has an approved transportation plan that talks about future streets to handle future projected growth, uh, everything from future traffic problems to existing traffic problems. One of the recommendations from that transportation plan was the extension of Grosetta Ranch Road from the from 89A roundabout down to Main Street, kind of a bypass to Old Town, uh, a collector street bypass to Old Town. Right now, a lot of our <coughs> big events, as Tim knows, uh, we have to divert traffic to residential streets. This collector street bypass would allow trucks to bypass Old Town, event traffic to bypass Old Town, uh, whenever is necessary. We have been approached by a developer along 89A, uh, that's the property currently owned by Andy Grosetta, and that developer uh, would like to build that road at their cost. Unfortunately, they do not own all the land to Main Street, so the city has approached the property owner who owns the land along Main Street and ask if they will dedicate the right of way. They have graciously agreed. Uh, the city bore the cost of having the results of survey completed, and the developer, I'm sorry, the property owner along Main Street has signed it. And so today we're here asking if the council would consider accepting that right of way. Now, this is just the right of way, so it is just bare ground today. We will then ask the subdivision when they come forward to improve the road and actually build the road at no cost to the city. Um, Mr. Pratt? Well, where does that connect to Main Street? Thank you very much. I apologize. I'm hoping we can get these images up and I should be able to see. Um, as you're coming into Old Town from Clarkdale, do you know where the sign is? It says, um, yeah, by college, Old Town. Yes. Uh, right near that sign. Okay. Just on the Clarkdale side of that sign. I think one uh, concern was expressed by the property owners across Main Street, and that is, okay, will traffic lights impact if someone wants to build on that property? Actually, where it comes in uh, is on the other side of the street is the uh, is the wash. So there's not a hillside, so there won't be a house built there. I think that was one concern that one citizen expressed was, will we be shining lights right inside somebody's front door in the future? And fortunately, not. 
So I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Elinsky? There where the monument sign is, the concrete, the poured concrete monument sign into Old Town, that's where this road is going to enter? Just on the north side of that, yes, sir. So that sign will actually remain. Okay. Uh, in fact, they may want to as part of their subdivision. I partially expect them to come back to council asking to improve that sign and perhaps put some of their own signage on it. So what's the, what's the uh, distance then from uh, the entrance into Gray Fox Ridge and North Willard? The Gray Fox Ridge? I mean, I guess my question is, should we be concerned about the amount of traffic that would be coming down there as being too, too close? I mean, sometimes we look at the, the areas where different driveways, you know, enter onto the main thoroughfares. So this is between Gray Fox and Kendra Heights, mm -hmm. which is a fairly good stretch today. Okay. Uh, it's several hundred feet to the nearest road. Okay. I apologize, I don't know the exact distance. But. Okay. Have, yes, Mr. Pratt? Have, have we solicited... Um, comments from the people that live close by there or businesses and have we heard any responses no the only people we've spoken to is the actual property owner okay so now as part of the public transportation plan there were several public meetings right okay but as far as this particular road notes are not yet i'm just wondering about the people that might affect as part of the subdivision process that will be a lot of public comment of the Mr. Elinsky. And so the, the design of the street, as far as the, the, the roadway width and bike lanes and sidewalks and all that stuff, is that going to be decided later? Yes. During the subdivision process? Okay. It will, the cost will also be borne by the developer, but the public city staff council will have an opportunity to okay. review that design. And obviously they'll be responsible to build it to city standards as well. Okay. Uh, Matt's actually been able to make this projector work. Up on this screen, you can see this is a survey of the right away. This is actually an overhead image. It includes contours. So you can see the main street there on the upper right-hand corner. Tough to see, but this area right here, excuse me, that, this is where that sign is. And it's a little difficult to see in this image, but the top of that arrow is where that masonry sign is. So there's going to be a substantial fill, uh, obviously, to fill that wash, possible retaining walls, guardrail, whatever else the engineer thinks is needed. This is that sign for those of you who might not be familiar with the sign. So it'll be just on the north side of this sign. It just seems, I mean, to get that part of town connected with Old Town is something that we've all been working on for years, and it makes wonderful sense to me. And I mean, the thoughts of a walkway from um, Vineyards at Cottonwood, love that name. Um, we're really happy our, our marketing and logo work has really been accepted by the community. Um, but just to think of people being able to walk down to Old Town from that area is really, I think, wonderful. I agree. Yeah, it will serve a useful purpose. And comments or questions? I'm just I'm curious. It um, just seems. Mr. Lansky? I, I too am really glad to see that we're we're looking at different um, ways to relieve traffic in the area. But how soon are we going to be looking at the overall plan? Because it it just seems odd to take one one street out of the bigger context. So I want to make sure that we, you know, we can address other issues that we have, like the sidewalk that well, that isn't there right now, that could connect into Old Town, and some other kind of safety concerns for pedestrians if we are going to be increasing foot traffic and. You know, pedestrian traffic along there would be nice to see what the city can do to make that a safer corridor. Um, as far as the timeline, that will mostly be driven by development. Okay. When they come in, I can tell you they actually went to code review this morning. It is Tuesday, right? Yes, mm -hmm. they went to code review this morning. Uh, so they are moving forward with their process. Um, okay. This particular phase would probably be a phase two or phase three of their subdivision, so they wouldn't necessarily build it first. But well, I think they're dealing with a four or five phase subdivision, but phase two or three would actually punch this road through. Okay. So Mr. Grossetta is here. Do you have any comments? 
at all that you wish to share? Just give you an opportunity. You can or don't have to. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I just echo what has been shared earlier. You know, this, uh, the, that road has uh, deteriorated to such a point that no one can use it going off the hill, if you know what I'm talking about, before it drops off into Kendra Heights or <coughs> in Yuma Road. And so it, this is just a, I think it's a win-win uh, to connect Highway 89A with um, Old Main Street. I know for emergency responders, anytime there's a major event here in <coughs> Old Town, and there's going to be quite a few major events that attracts a lot of people, it, it's a concern uh, to get in and out. Um, and this uh, provides another access um, for not only the public, but also for first responders uh, to get to the Old Town area. And as all of you know, um, going back for 10, 15, 20 years uh, between the county and the town, you have facilitated uh, transportation planning and regional plans, and this has always been on those plans that connect Highway 89A to uh, the old highway. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's fabulous. It's kind of a bypass bypass. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I was going to say that, yeah, we've talked about this for quite a bit. And it's, I hope I'll it's been in the record. See it. What's that? I hope I live long enough to see it. We've talked about it forever. I know. We, I kind of so I kind of feel the same way about some of these projects that could really take right. many years. Um, but I just think that too, it will relieve some of the traffic from going the other way, even. And that, you know, so it's I don't know. Just connecting to Old Town to me is a positive. Yeah, you know, the other thing I think will get some relief on Verde Heights too, because a lot of Tourists travel, and how do you get to Old Town? And so if they mess. They go for Verde Lillard, Heights. A lot of them come down Verde Heights, and so this provides an alternative, uh, a more direct shot to Old Town, or leaving Old Town to get back on Highway 89, going to either Clarkdale or Trump. Yeah, Verde Heights is not a good feeder road. No, but it's, it's scary up there sometimes. Yeah, it's just such a, a tight knit little residential area. It wasn't really built for major traffic right. through it. So, well, I like it. I like Thank it. You. Okay, Mr. Pratt. It's the time for a motion. Is there anyone from the, the public who would like to comment on this item before the motion? Yes, Mr. Pratt, please. I move to approve resolution number 2831, accepting the right-of-way easement for the continuation of Grosetta Ranch Road from the southwest to Main Street, subject to approval of the final form of agreement by the city attorney. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. The vice mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Grosetta, you lived long enough to see <laughs> Hope we all do. <laughs> okay, so um, City Clerk, Deputy Clerk, please read resolution number 2831 by title only. Resolution number 2831, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona, accepting a right-of-way easement for the continuation of Grosetta Ranch Road as a public right-of-way. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, item number three, resolution number 2832, approving an intergovernmental agreement with Yavapai County to provide residents of Yavapai County with the opportunity to participate in Cottonwood's Household Hazardous Waste Program. Mr. Scott. Madam Mayor, members of the council, you'll remember during last budget season, the council approved a budget of $20,000 to move forward with a free household hazardous waste drop-off a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between hazardous waste and household hazardous waste? We're not necessarily dealing with nuclear waste or, or something people have to be afraid of. These are more the things that are already in your homes, the batteries, the cleaning products, the paints, the things that your trash company actually will not allow you to dump in the trash can. And we get a lot of calls at the transfer station of public work saying, how do I get rid of this? You'd be amazed at actually the things that uh, most of your trash companies will not take. Now they end up slipping in the trash cans light bulbs, especially fluorescent light bulbs are actually considered a hazardous waste. They're, they're around us all every day, but we're not supposed to throw them away. This is an opportunity for our residents to dispose of materials like that safely and actually free. We're already planning the event for April. While we were planning, Yavapai County reached out to us and said, is there any chance that we can share not only the planning of the event, the cost of the event, and we said we entertain the idea. They brought forward a proposed IGA that they already had with the City of Prescott. Um, in which they do something very similar. The city of Prescott actually hosts the event, Yavapai County supplies some personnel and equipment for the event, 
and according to the IGA, you've probably seen in your packets, they'll split the cost depending on the participating number of vehicles. So however the percentage divides out at the end of the day, we'll split the cost between us and the county. So our total, they're not adding to the 20,000. It's just they're going to, if there are county residents who use that, then they will contribute that much per customer or whatever. That's correct. The, the city will not spend more than 20000 And what that may mean is if we reach that $20,000 mark, we may have to start turning the city of Cotton residents away. 20000 we should be able to service about 200 households. Right. And a lot of times when the county does this, they spend like $100,000 for about four hours, so hopefully the 20,000 will get us <laughs> squeaked through to, to add the county to it, but I think it's wonderful to have those collaborations and work regionally. <coughs> Anybody from the public like to comment on this item? Mr. Pratt? I was gonna say I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is a no-brainer and it gives people a Rather than dumping them in the wash, they'll have a place to dump this stuff. It's a good thing. It's all good. I wish that we could do more. I have a question for you. Yes, Scott. Mr. Hadegi. So when it comes to paint, uh, I know the county uh, accepts paint. If you if it's wet paint, you got to mix it up with dirt before you can they accept it. That's the same thing that's going to happen here. Or we've been working with the company who's going to be providing the cleanup services. They will accept paint, but it's one of the most expensive things they accept. So what we're going to be doing instead is handing out free paint hardeners. So instead of mixing it with dirt, you can take it home, put a hardener in it. Okay. It'll harden in a matter of two days, and then you're perfectly acceptable to throw it away. So that we think that's a less expensive way to dispose of it. Obviously, it takes a little more effort on the citizens' part, but it'll still be free to them. Okay. Well, that, that's what I wanted to check on because I've taken wet paint out there, and then you know that's where I found out about they won't take it, and you got to harden it up. So. Okay. So, so the public knows. Right. Isn't there, aren't there some companies who will take paint and mix it all together and donate it to nonprofits? Yes. In fact, Habitat for Humanity is one local company. Obviously, that depends on the quality of the paint and condition that it's in, but any citizen who would mm -hmm. like to give away a paint any time of the year might want to give Habitat a call. Okay. So for members of the audience, the public, if you have paint, that you would like to dispose of and it's in fairly decent condition, please consider reuse and that's donating it to ha Habitat for Humanity. Call them and find out before you, before you even do this. I mean, to destroy it if it's good paint and it could be used by a nonprofit, that would be wonderful. So hopefully people will think of that. Okay, so um, any other discussion? I'd entertain a motion. I'll move to approve resolution 2832. I'll second. Okay, Mr. Elinsky made the motion. Mr. Dowling seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Deputy Clerk, please read resolution number 2832 by title only. Resolution number 2832, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Yavapai County, Arizona. Approving an intergovernmental agreement with Yavapai County to provide residents of Yavapai County the opportunity to participate in Cottonwood's Household Hazardous Waste Program. Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. The next item is claims and adjustments. I move to approve the claims. Second. Mr. Pratt made the motion. The Vice Mayor seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move to adjourn. Second. Third. <laughs> the mayor made the motion. I think Mr. Elinsky was first in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned.